Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a flat bottom plate from a slab of clay. Start with clay from a bag or you can wedge it, then you want to flatten it out to get it through your roller. You can also make a slab of clay with a rolling pin or with a mallet, however you do it in your studio. I like to make my slabs about 3 eighths of an inch thick. After rolling, you want to smooth one side unless you want to keep that canvas texture. Here I'm using a 14 inch bat as a template to cut a circle of clay. I'm going to remove the excess clay and then the slab is ready to transfer to the wheel. I'm using a hydro, hydro bat that's made out of hydrocal. You really want to use an absorbent bat for this technique, something made out of plaster, hydrocal, wood, maybe a wood composite. A plastic bat, the, the slab may not dry as easily for you. I put the smooth side down, and then here I am smoothing the top side of the slab. The next step is I'm going to remove about an inch that will re uh, result in about a 12 inch wide slab to create a plate that will then shrink down to about 11 inches. That's what works for me. But you can make this really uh, any size you want. The technique is super flexible. Removing the excess clay there, I'm going to take a sponge and soften that cut edge, clean it up. Then if you can see, I just sort of opened up my splash pan so that I could get my wooden tool, my wooden knife underneath, and I'm just starting to raise the outside edge of the slab. In this process, you want to make sure to not push any crumbs or bits of clay underneath the slab because they'll cause uh, de defects for your, for your plate. Now I'm raising up the side adding a little bit of water to help in that process. I'm going to really smooth out and compress that uh, edge, that rim, and really shape it. You can make your plate any, you know, you can make that lip any angle you want from vertical to almost horizontal. I'm going for a slight bevel here so that the plates will stack nicely. After smoothing out the top and removing any excess throwing water. I'm adding a spiral design on the top. I like how the glaze settles into this design, but you could leave it flat. And that's it. It's quick, fun, and easy. And then you can take it off and let it dry until it's leather hard. Once it's leather hard, return it to the wheel and flip it over. I'm going to start with a rib and clean up some imperfections from the slab and the making process. And then the next step, I uh, will take a loop tool and trim this and refine the edge a little bit. Sometimes you can almost get away with not even trimming these slab plates, but it's a good idea to kind of pay attention and make sure that the bottom is how you want it to be. Final step in the making process here is I'm going to just smooth it out. This is the most flexible mud tools rib, closing all the pores, and the plate is ready to now dry out completely. I dry it again under plastic. Once it's bone dry, I'll stack them uh, in stacks of two and load them in the bisque kiln. In my kiln, you can fit uh, three or four stacks of plates, and so I'm always uh, kind of trying to put other things in there with it, although that top level a little underfilled. Okay, now it's bisque fired. I'm going to start by wringing out a sponge and cleaning any dust or debris off of the surface. Then I'm going to mix up my glaze. When I'm working with dinnerware or tiles or anything like that, I always screen the glaze like I'm doing here, just to make sure there's no little bisque chunks or anything like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and just pour the glaze right on, turn it around. There's a bit of an edge there that I didn't catch. And when the plate is dry, I'll grab the other side and put glaze there. I'm going to then flip it over 
and paint some glaze on the, on the outside of the rim. My glazing is a little bit loose and uh, that's fine with me. I like the variation that results from that. The next step is just to clean up any glaze uh, on the bottom. I use a sponge for that. And then the plate is ready to be glaze fired. In my kiln, I fire to cone six in oxidation. Stacking up the shelves, filling it up. And that is basically it. After the glaze fire, time to take a look and see your results. Thanks for watching. This has been a video on how to make a slab plate. They're quick, fun, and I hope you try it out in your studio. Thanks for watching.